Well, hello, hello, General Hospital Daily Recap fans. Today's Daily Recap is for, oh my God, Wednesday already. Oh, Wednesday, July 12th, 2023. Wednesday, July 12th. And I'm telling you, the stuff I needed to get done this week hasn't been done. So, oh my God, where's the time go? Okay, what's happening now is we've got something interesting going on. Glad Gladys and the doctor, both won big and they've been playing all night. And oh, they're so energized. They're drinking and Selena Wu comes out the back and says, congratulations, you two. And they're like, yeah, because um, Gladys was saying, we should have some champagne. And the doctor, whatever his name is, Montague, I don't know what his name is. No, I don't know. Whatever, stupid doctor, shyster. But anyway, uh, he goes, shouldn't we add some orange juice to it? Because it's early in the morning. And I'm thinking, don't you have patients' lives to destroy, doctor? Right? So anyway, Selena says, champagne is on me. And so Gladys is like, oh, I just feel so energized after playing all night. Look, I want enough. I can make an installment today. And Selena just smiled at her. And Cody comes out from the back. And Selena looks at him like you got a lot to answer for. My card counter, right? So she beckons him to the other side of the room. And they sit down and he goes, she goes, what happened? He goes, I had an off night. He, she goes, you lost two games in a row. He goes, yeah, man, really off nights. He, he says, maybe you should fire me. I mean, I would understand if you let me go. And she's like, no, something else is going on. And he was busy looking at Gladys and the doctor toasting it up and just thick as thieves, right? But he doesn't know that's Sasha's doctor. He doesn't know that yet. Otherwise, he would know something was up, especially when he hears about or sees Sasha, because Sasha is just off a deep end, giddy. You know, you look at her and say, girl, you high? Right, Maxie was shopping with Sasha, and Sasha was just woo, just ridiculously all over the place. And Maxie's looking at her, said, "Sasha, are you okay? Cause you seem a little over bubbly. What's going on?" And she goes, "Oh, my new my new court appointed um, psychiatrist." He prescribed something for me and it's making me feel so good because she bought all these clothes for Willow. I was going to buy all these clothes for Willow's new life, right? And I was like, you know what, Sasha? For one thing, grown women don't buy clothes for other grown women. Seriously. Willow can buy her own clothes. And what you gonna pick out, she picked out these short little black pants and this really cute top, but I'm thinking, you ain't never seen Willow wear nothing like that, right? And Sasha's like, what? I mean, not Sasha, Maxie looks at the price. She goes, ah, uh, look, the price of this one top. She was just like, I forget what saying she said, but it's like, oh no, that's somebody's salary, right? So Sasha's like, Willow deserves it. And Sasha's thinking, and I got money. No, you don't. No, you don't. So Maxie ends up having to leave to go referee the kids at home. And Sasha's left there, you know, by herself shopping. Well, anyway, let's get back to, to Selena and Cody. And she's like, Mr. Bell, do I have your attention? Because he's busy looking at Gladys. And he goes, she's up to something. Selena says, you better worry about what you're up to. And he goes, I don't know what you're talking about. She goes, you begged me to let you stay. And now you're wanting to leave? You cost me a lot of money. And if I have to pay you have to pay. 
And he looked at her, he goes, well, I don't have, I don't have that kind of money. He's thinking, girl, you don't pay me enough to cover <laughs> losses for the night, right? So she looks at him and she calls over her bodyguard. And he, Cody looks up at him and she tells the guy, go get the cards from tonight's game. So he does. And they spread them out. And the card guard goes, uh, white ink. And Selena looks at him and she looks at Cody and he goes, well, I don't I don't know how that got on them. Uh, um, especially it was the like ace of clubs or ace of hearts, whatever, or ace of diamonds. And he goes, I don't know how that got on there. And I mind you, Gladys leaves, but I didn't really see that doctor leave, but maybe he did because, you know, who pays attention to that idiot? So anyway, the guard is frisking Cody all the way down and he goes into his boots and there's the white ink pen in there. And Mrs. Wu, Selena looks at him like you got a problem now. And they didn't show how she's going to handle him yet. That's probably tomorrow's episode. But yeah, Cody got charged fixing the... Now, mind you, he's paid to cheat. He's paid to count cards. But so she could win. But now she caught him cheating. <laughs> Look, double cheating uh, or double cross cheating. That's what she caught him doing, right? So we'll see. Cody's going to either have his kneecaps broken or whatever. Right, Cody, who cares about him? Well, you want to know what? I had a spark of happiness in my soul when I saw Jackson. Oh, my goodness. To me, oh, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, that man was the finest and still is. I'm sorry. If Jackson shaved off that gray mustache and beard, he would look as young as he looked 20 years ago. Fine man, okay? But he was always so suave and debonair. Oh, he to me was always too good for Erica, right? But see, Erica had to go for his bad boy brother, Travis Montgomery. But that didn't last because Travis was a bad boy and Erica's a bad girl. How long can a bad boy and a bad girl be together? But Jackson was always this voice of reasoning and just always loved Erica. For, anyway, this look, this ain't all my children. But when I saw him, I was like, I missed you. Boy, have I missed you. And you know what? Poor Charles needs a good lawyer like you needs a good lawyer so he you know lucy and um felicia have their little scheme their little ploy to get in the office so they can look at the files to see you know what marty's up to so lucy's all dressed up to beguile jackson or or, or flirt with jackson while felicia is going to be in the office outer office trying to find files and she couldn't get the receptionist away from the desk but Lucy inside, you know, told uh, Jackson she needed this special uh, latte coffee, you know, special blend of whatever, whatever. So he comes out and he tells the receptionist to go ahead and pick it up, go around the corner to the coffee shop around the corner. And he asked Felicia, would you like something? And she goes, why, yes, yes, I would. And I forget what order she said, because who cares? So... <laughs> and he told the receptionist and pick yourself up something. So she's like, hey, okay, you said the magic words to pick myself up something. So she leaves and now Felicia is searching the file cabinets are locked. But of course she finds the key in the receptionist's desk. She finds the Montague file. So I guess Marty's last name is Montague. So open it up and it's empty. She's like, duh, duh. So she puts the file back, closes it up, locks it, puts the key back. And now she's trying to search other things in the office, but there's a safe that's in the outer office there. And I thought, who 
the heck keeps the safe out there? Right? That should be in Jackson's office or in one of the closets behind closed doors in Jackson's office or another office, not in the, in the waiting room. So Felicia's looking at the safe and she hears Felicia talking loud. I mean, Lucy talking loud, coming towards the door. So she sits down, right? And when Jackson comes out, the receptionist just comes with a cup of coffee, the coffee for the three. So Lucy snatches hers and says, oh, I got to take mine to go. And then uh, she tells Jackson or Jackson says, so I'm going to see you at eight tonight. And she goes, eight it is. You know how Lucy is. And you know what? I'm still pissed off at Lucy, right? I am still so pissed off at her. I don't even want to see her in a scene. I can't stand her. So anyway, her and Felicia, they both go out in the hallway. And Felicia's like, you know what? That wasn't in the plan for you to start talking, you know, making plans with, 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 with you know, Mr. Montgomery and talking to him. And she goes, look, let me tell you, Felicia, what did you get? Did you get the information on Martin that we needed? She goes, no, but there is a safe in the lobby. And she goes, oh, and you know how to crack a safe. And she goes, yes, I do. I've got skills. So Lucy, <laughs> Lucy says then, I've got skills too. And I guess I'm going on a date. And so Felicia says, you know, but it's still important, Lucy, that you follow the plan because that's what kind of went wrong with the other mission. And, and Lucy just looks at her. She goes, look, we need information. And then Felicia says, but I guess it's good that now Mr. Montgomery will be occupied at eight. So she's going to try to crack the safe because she feels, I don't know, that telepathy. But this is where I feel martin's file is going to be versus a file in jackson's office because maybe martin's one of his top clients I, you know whatever felicia so that's what they're up to and we have willow's home she and michael are just you know they fi they finally getting to cuddle up and and be happy and yada 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 and uh she says that, unfortunately, the nurse gave her a rundown of what she can and can't do. And she told Michael that they can't be intimate. And Michael said, that's okay, uh, Willow. I, I kind of figured that. And, you know, I've been reading the path pamphlets that they sent you home with. And you know what? Look, I can wait. And she goes, but you've waited so long. We never even got to consummate our marriage. And, you know, and there's just, she goes, and look, I don't even want to wait. And he goes, Willow, do you want to know what was unbearable to me? Was coming home to an empty house. And not knowing when you were coming, coming back home. You know, hard to me was, was every time Wiley would even ask me, when is mommy coming back? And I didn't have an answer. You're here. You're my world. So if I got to wait a little longer, I got to wait a little longer. But she says, but we can cuddle, we can kiss, we can hug. Yeah, okay. So they'll, they'll be doing all that for a minute, right? So now, then we get a knock on the door. And it's Sasha. Hello, Sasha. You should, you should have put me on that. She's all over the place, bouncing off the ceiling. And Michael kind of looks at her like, are you okay? And she comes in with some bags and she sits up and, oh. and Willow comes down the stairs and because Michael had Sasha put on her mask and Willow put on her mask too. And she goes, I can't wait for us to a hug. But for now, she's doing this yoga thing, fake hug in the air. Close your eyes. And then Sasha's like, and Willow's looking like, girl, you okay? <laughs> you know? So she sits down. Michael has to go take a business call outside. And um, I think he finds out that Curtis was shot. I think that Jocelyn's calling him. Tell, and I think she tells him that. But anyway, um, 
Sasha is just talking to Willow a, a mile a minute. Da -da 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 -da. And Willow's just kind of looking at her. And then she says, I got you this. And I, now she says, pulling out all kinds. It's got a hoodie so your ears don't get cold and blah, blah, blah. And then she goes, oh, and oh, oh, I got you this top. And she pulls out the top. And Willow is like, Sasha, this top. And you know what? I didn't even... Uh, bring the picture in on that top. Let's see if I can bring that picture in. Sasha says, um, I mean, Willow says, Sasha, this top still has the tag, the sensor, right? Not the tag, it has the sensor on it. And so Sasha looks at it. You know what? I didn't actually fix that picture. So whatever. Sasha looks at it and she's like, oh, so she takes it back. Well, I guess I got to take that back and get that fixed. Because Willow, she goes, oh my, go upstairs and put, like, she wanted Willow to go upstairs and put the clothes on. And Willow was like, no, I can't put on things freshly bought from the store. Everything has to now be washed, like, and cleaned and, you know, kind of like sanitized, right? So, because freshly bought, store-bought clothes, it's interesting how we don't think about it. But freshly store-bought clothes, there's chemicals in it. And, you know, you, you, your body has to be in a very healthy state to wear clothes fresh off the rack, right? And these are things we don't think about. I mean, when my daughter had my grandchild, I only have my, my granddaughter, and she was a baby, she was like, everything, and I had, look, that little girl had clothes all the way up to size four. I, I just went overboard every stage of uh from from zero newborn to size 40 I had clothes 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 and she goes before we put these clothes on her you know you've got to wash them they have to be and then she my daughter's all in this healthy stuff she so she had the the or the healthy baby detergent made by honest right okay and I do like the honest brand of stuff but you know and that's the first time I heard about clothes should be washed, especially if an infant has sensitive skin issues. And my granddaughter went through that, you know, all babies kind of go through something. She went through that period where you had to be careful with different fragrances and it, because of break her out, right? So that's when I first learned about washing clothes, for brand new clothes. Um, but then once the child gets older, you know, your body gets more of an immune system going on, then you really don't have to. Yeah, it's suggested, but who's going to really do that? Please, I don't buy nothing from the store for me and go and go wash it, <laughs> you know, or take it to the, I better be immune enough. But anyway, so Sasha's like, oh, okay, but then she's going to take it back because now she sees the sensor. So there's another knock on the door. Michael's back in and it's Chase. And Michael, he goes, hey, Willow. And so Chase puts on his mask. She goes, Chase. And so he goes, she goes, you, you know, you came to see me or Willow? Or, or Sasha said, you came to see Willow too? And he goes, well, actually, Sasha, I'm here to see you. And she goes, what? I'm here to see you. And then she's bubbling. She's like talking over him, bubbling all, all over the place. And as she's doing this all over the place talking, I'm like, first of all, how did you know she was at Willow's? How do, do you have on your phone app, Chase, find my Sasha? Do you have that? Because how did you know where to go? Willow's place to me would have been the last place I would have looked for Sasha. Because Willow can have very limited visitors. Willow has to be in a sterile environment. So why would I just pop over to go see Sasha. If I did go to the quarter main estate and see Sasha's car outside or, or you know, parked right where I could see it, am I going to go into Willow's house? Willow just getting out of the hospital? It's supposed to be kept calm. And, and I would wait for Sasha to come out, Chase. Let, let's, let's think about this. Because, now you know, he's coming in. She goes, Really? He goes, Sasha, listen, I'm here because you're under arrest. And she's like, what? 
See, that very expensive blouse that was worth somebody's salary, she stole it. That's why it had the tag in it. And not that she went in to steal it. She probably forgot to pay for it and stuff, shuffed, stuffed it in her bag. Either way, these drugs got her so high, right? And that's one thing Gladys was telling that doctor, listen, listen, I do need this conservative ship to go on, but the drugs that, you know, that you're giving her, is it going to harm her? Are they dangerous? And he goes, no, by themselves, they're fine. He said, but mixed with her other medication she's already taking, oh, she's going to have a reaction. But it's not a fatal reaction. But everybody, and so so Gladys says, but is people going to notice? And he goes, oh, yeah. People are going to notice a difference in her behavior. And Gladys is like, because, you know, I mean, I do care about her. And I thought, girl, you need to choke on that champagne. Because if that's how you show somebody you care by having their whole sobriety taken away and undermined by stealing money from her trust, by just lying. Girl, Gladys, if that's how you care for people, don't you even look my, good God. Just, She's a piece of work and I can't wait for Gladys Corbin to get what's coming to her, right? Because that's, oh, anyway, let's get off of that. So before Chase gets there, he Brooklyn and Tracy are on poolside, of course, talking and, and your hands together. And, and Chase comes up because, you know, every time I see you two, it seems like your hands are together about something. Because every time he pops up, Brooklyn turns around, Matter of fact, I was so sick of seeing it. I had to I had to take a picture of it. <laughs> Constantly. She cannot shut her mouth. I don't know why. See, you know how I would call it and make fun, do the Brooklyn. I don't know why she gets reads her script and it says do the Brooklyn. 10 times in her day's work, she's going to do the Brooklyn. Shut your mouth, girl. That's not a good look. Anyway, she finally comes clean with Chase that Tracy, because Tracy's is like, you know, it makes no sense. You going back to work. And, you know, so she goes, well, my grandmother wants me there. And he goes, and why would you do it? And she finally said, because she helped get you reinstated. Now, mind you, she's committed a crime, but now she's going to come clean. Right? She should have came clean before she stole from the company. But, you know. So he goes, you what? She goes, look. She goes, when, when it, you know, everything was going wrong. So I called my granny and she, you know, she helped, you know, get the board, you know, have them reconsider. And Tracy goes, uh, they didn't make their decision because of me. But yeah, I made a phone call and, and they gave you a second look. And I'm thinking, see, we don't know that because it was Jordan. Dante even told him how it happened. Right. But anyway, Tracy is saying she did and, you know, whatever. And so she goes, but convincing them that you were ready, you did. A, that was all you when you got in the room. And he goes, but why? What I don't understand is why do you want Brooklyn back at deception? What's so important about deception? And Tracy's just looking at him. And Brooklyn. Because he goes, you know what? Because if I find out Miss Quartermain, that you are having, trying to have Brooklyn do something illegal. And Brooklyn's already, because she knows she already did. So Chase's phone rings and he has to go. And Tracy's like, why are you telling him all of this? 
She goes, because I'm sick of you holding it over my head. I'm sick of it, Granny. I'm done. Tra Chase wants honesty, and I want Tra Chase hates being lied to. And I'm thinking, I don't know nobody who loves being lied to. Brooklyn, but you can't help you. You cannot choose the right path. You can never choose the right path. Because having somebody find out a piece of information that's completely legal, that you can explain just like you explained it right now, you won't do. But you will let somebody talk you into doing something completely illegal. You will do that. That is Brooklyn. I just can't stand her character. So anyway, Chase comes back. He says he has to go. And he tells Brooklyn, Brooklyn, we're going to talk about this later. Right? And so um, she turns back around and she's looking at him because he walks away and she's thinking, see, you ruining things for me. But then Chase turns around Brooklyn and he comes and then he gives her this big old kiss. Oh. And she's like, oh. So she lays on the lawn's chair with her hands behind her head. And Tracy's like, you need to get to work. She goes, oh, I don't have to go to work anymore there because Chase knows the truth. And so Tracy looks at her and says, does he now? Don't forget, you committed corporate espionage. Oh, that's highly illegal. He doesn't know about that. And Brooklyn looks at her grandmother. She goes, now I suggest you get to work. And see, my whole thing is, this is supposed to be her grandmother. This is why Tracy is so despicable. Is there is no one that she won't throw under a bus. No one. And not even her own granddaughter. Period. So anyway, Brooklyn, come on. You know what? She going to get what she deserves. I could care less about Brooklyn. I, I really just can't, I can't stand her. So that's it for General Hospital Day today, everybody. Let's go to Comic Corner, Comic Corner. Linda says, you're so right. Nina is not a mob, boss's, a mob boss wife material, period. I wish she would drop off the earth. Wow, Linda, yikes, right? <laughs> Andrea says, this story reminds me of the destiny story in One Life to Live. Um, Trina and Spencer and Portia, really? Yeah, I think it was a lot like that story because Destiny's mother couldn't stand Clint and, and, and Nora's son, whatever his name was, right? But anyway, uh andrea also says esme does remember she says i don't understand why trina cussed why trina cussed her out well trina didn't cut it cuss esme out um i had a feeling that curtis is not trina's father yeah the dna test came back that she was unless it comes out somebody changed it you know look every dna test done in general hospitals always falsified Andrea says, I wish Taggart was Trina's father. T Taggart who? Taggart who? Really? Because last I checked, Taggart hasn't been around for not one of Trina's crisis. Not one. So you wish he were his her father? Why? So he could be just as gone as he already is? At least Curtis will be there for Trina, right? And then I am says the former Trina would have eaten Esme up alive. And Ron says, Trina will be crushed. Be, uh, Trina will be crushed because the blood won't match. And if she wants Spencer to know what happened, she would have, she would have called Josh and Josh uh, would be a drama queen. I don't understand that comment though, Ron. She, Trina will be crushed because what, what, what B O O D booed, which I thought it was blood, won't match. Trina and Curtis is a match. Are you trying to say if it turned? No, Trina and Curtis is a match. Uh, B Brown says it's ironic how Jocelyn acts so aggressive towards Esme, 
like Spencer acts aggressive towards Dex. I know, huh? Jane says, Jocelyn and Trina are smart uh, for Esme's tricks. Uh, you know what? As far as tricks are concerned, Esme runs circles around them. That's how she got over on them, right? Um, Coretta says, I believe scab writers are going to step in once the material runs out. I heard the Screen Actors Guild's strike doesn't include soap actors. No, really? I think soap actors are Screen Actors Guild actors too. Um, Michael says, uh, you're right as usual. Nina will make a horrible mob boss. That's probably why Sonny likes her though. Nina likes Nixon Falls. Uh, is Sonny's escape from the mob world. Um, you would, wait, you have to admit Nina's a good friend to her friends. She sure is. If you're friends with Nina, Nina likes you. She is a good friend to her friends. I like the way Nina was there for the Ashfords. Stella and Marshall look mighty cozy. Stella is being uh, a good support for Marshall um, as he talked about Epiphany. I liked how Marshall um, is protect her mental health. What? How Marshall is protecting her mental health. Um, I am not a fan of Jocelyn or Esme. However, Joss and es has Esme's number, or had Esme's number. Sonny and Anna should join force forces to find the shooter. Great recap. Marsha says, great recap. I love the way you describe your reviews. Old time storytelling to me. Um, thanks, my dear. You know what? I do like to tell stories, which is why, look, if the soap stories aren't good enough, I'm going to make something up, y'all. I'm going to make it up. But then I, I I do honestly tell you, okay, you know what? That didn't happen because <laughs> I don't want to completely miss. I said, no, she didn't say that. That's what I'll say. You know, ah, oh, that didn't happen. And then uh, Leanne says, Esme always allegedly falls for Spencer again. Uh, only when she sees uh, he is with Trina, Um to her, it's like a game. She doesn't love Spencer, but she doesn't want Trina to have him. Sabrina says, girl, no, she wants him. Did you see how she was rubbing his arm and how she was looking at him when he was singing to Ace? And then Leanne says, for real, I remember the soaps running out of material too. Um, it was crazy and so boring. Sabrina says, hey, Daily Recap Lady, uh, little Carly going in on Esme was the best. I need more of that. So finally, Boring Finn and Elizabeth are back together. See, I didn't talk. Good God, fast forward them. So the writers um, can have Hayden, that's right, back to break them up. They are so, you were so funny today. I love your Esme voice. Thank you, Sabrina. Marsha says, my daughter loved it too. And I felt Jocelyn became... Uh, because I felt for Jocelyn because she and Cameron were victims too. Yes, she was spread and just naked. All, oh my goodness. It was horrible what happened to her. And um, Marsha says, um, oh, Sabrina says to Marsha, hi, Marsha, uh, like your daughter, I feel bad for Jocelyn. Uh, after yesterday, I understand the pain she's endured. And still enduring because of what Esme did. I hope that Trina, uh, Cam, Joss, and Spencer get on the same page to take her down. Francis says, Esme is evil and will never change. Lucy says, does anyone else suspect that Aunt Stella has a secret? Curtis, I do. I suspect Curtis is, uh, that she's Curtis's bio mother. And Sabrina says, I don't know but she did act like something she wanted to tell him but if so is Marshall his dad or could it be that her sister cheated on Marshall just a thought Lucy said to Sabrina yes Marshall cheated on his wife with her sister Stella <laughs> and that could be why he stayed away that schizophrenia misdiagnosis was just a ruse no one would uh, be suspicious especially Portia it's going to be a great storyline. And Sabrina said to Lucy, hi, Lucy. Um, that would be pretty gross if Marshall slept with uh, Stella. I am thinking that Stella's sister is cheating 
was the cheater and Stella knows about it. Uh, Lucy says to Sabrina, hi there, Sabrina. I like that theory. Stella's sister's name came up a couple of times. Irene Ashford. Um, what if she's alive? I'm glad for the new story plot. Anyway, it un it unfold. It's unfold will be good. And Cindy says maybe Stella had an affair with Marsha on the plot that pro produced Curtis. They do seem to have some secrets. I am says thinking the same thing. Lucy said to send us that's that would be an interesting story plot finally and then sabrina says to lucy i agree with you lucy uh carrie says uh, pl please esme get your memory back so you can defend yourself from the scooby-doo gang oh what <laughs> and i like dex and um and as I wait. It looked like Dex and Esme had some kind of awkwardness around each other. I know. I I wondered that too. And then Danel Danelda says, "I will join your story. I enjoy you very much. Thank you very much. I'm happy you glad you're here." Uh, Donkey says, "I can't wish. I can't stop wishing Taggart was Trina's father." Marsha says, I think Taggart might be, still be her father. And then um, Vivian said to Marsha, uh, love eight. I don't know what love eight means. But anyway, that's it for Comic Corner. Comic Corner, everybody. Thank you for commenting. I will be back for another daily recap of General Hospital.